Hi everyone, uh, I hope that you're safe and well and settling back into uh, university life. Um, so I'm delighted to bring to you some, some great content that we've got here. We've got uh, Phil Bateman with us, who is an ex-GMTG member uh, and then goes on to become a professional musical director um, and has a whole host of professional credits, including uh, MD in the national tour of Return of the Forbidden Planet and was the original F uh, West End MD for both Our House and Billy Elliot. Um, and then went on to musically supervise um, I Can't Sing, which was the X Factor musical, uh, and also Made in Dagenham. So thank you so much for joining me. How are you? I'm oh, good. Thank you very much. Yeah. Good. So, uh, as I said, you know, you're an ex GMG member. Yeah. Uh, you know, qu quite a while back, I, uh, from what I gather. Uh, what was your involvement with GMTG like? So, uh, I, this, is, this is going back now to 1989 which is when I uh, started uni at Birmingham. Uh, and uh, yeah, I joined, um, I think at the end of my, or mid my first term, and I just played in the band initially for um, Guys and Dolls. Uh, and then I think I was involved in a production almost one a term, right through uh, three years of uni. Um, I was on the music course uh, with drama, um, but I seemed to spend most of my time uh, doing GMTG stuff. So I ended up directing a uh, production of Grease and I was in Company, Chicago, The Hired Man. I think that's, yeah, it's about the right list. And I, and I made two of my best mates uh, within GMTG, neither of whom were music students uh, and uh, are still two, my two best mates today. That's quite, that's quite funny. So, so, you know, you directed um, Grease and you were in company, but you, you never MD'd a show. I didn't, right? no, no. And so I suppose uh, at the time, I, I wasn't quite sure which area my career was going to go in. Um, <clears throat> I'd always loved music and theatre uh, and done sort of A-levels, like uh, those A-levels with English. Um, but I wasn't really sure what I was going to do for a career. And in fact, I went and travelled actually after uni, partly because I wasn't sure. A lot of people were very clued up and sure that they were going to go and teach or, or, or what they were going to do but um but I wasn't sure so, and I wanted to get out and see the world so I, I went out and um I went to Australia and I lived in Australia for a while and uh, and worked out there and came back and um and sort of started from scratch and even then wasn't quite sure which area and really in my 20s I worked as an actor musician uh performing, uh, starting off in sort of fringe shows, whilst also doing a bit of teaching on the side, um, piano and singing. Um, and then I got involved in some drama schools where I was doing vocal coaching, um, and then started doing more and more sort of fringe shows at, at night in the West, uh, sorry, in London. Um, and then, yeah, gradually uh, auditioned for uh, Forbidden Planet, which is, I don't know if any of you know, is, is a great actor musician show. And I kind of thought, yeah, I could do that. I could do all those things. Uh, and in fact, I wasn't given that straight away because that was a big national tour that was going on in that first year I was um, around. But I, uh, but I, the music supervisor passed my name on and I did a fringe production, um, which is the sister show called Jack to a King, which is Macbeth sort of put to rock and roll. And, um, and I uh, was asked to be MD on that as well as in it. So I think from that moment on, I, I, I was then sort of usually... MD in some capacity as well as being in these shows and I think in that in my 20s I really enjoyed the fact that I was still on stage and, and you know enjoyed all that part of it and in fact I did 99 so several years after that I did finally get to do Forbidden Planet and it was it was the national tour it was probably one of the best fun times I've ever had actually sort of on tour for a year traveling around the country performing to 2,000 people a night and, um, you know, uh, always used to sing the encore, which is very exciting. And uh, yeah, so, um, but that's, yeah, that's, just, that's how I, I got involved. And then I, having done lots of sort of fringy stuff and some so started doing some regional theatre, I did get a bit of a break uh, then when I was probably around 30 or so um, with doing the first workshop for the Madness musical Our House. And I was suddenly thrown into, um, a room with Matthew Warchus, who now runs the Old Vic, um, and who also directed Matilda, um, and Tim Firth, who wrote the wrote the book really cleverly, and we just started working workshopping, and it you know it was we were all fairly green. None of us had done a brand new musical before, and I certainly had never conducted before. I'd never been in the West End before, 
so it was a really steep learning curve. Um, and in fact, I was sort of musical supervisor and MD, and I did all the, the vocal arrangements and dance arrangements. And it was a sort of baptism of fire, but it was amazing and ex extraordinary experience, really. And that then led on to Billy Elliot, which I then got involved with a year or so before it opened and was part of the, the team putting that all together and helping create it, really. Um, so with such a with such a steep learning curve in terms of moving straight into, you know, moving from acting musician to moving into um, becoming a more MD, do you think that GMTG and your experiences with GMTG helped you to, um, you know, to manage that steep learning curve? And, and how do you think that, you know, the experiences you got with GMTG helped in, in your movement into the professional well, industry? I think it all did, actually, because I think really what it's to do with it's to do i mean really you just have to do it you have to just do it and, and doing it in different capacities you're going to learn more i think part of the job of, of an md in fact one of the most crucial things is about communication and it's understanding how directors work how actors work um how people can be actors can be if they're maybe not that they may be singers but that or they may be not such strong singers and they may have, may have all sorts of anxieties you've got to be able to deal with that um and then how you're working with writers, working with composers. And I think it's really, really crucial to the role of, of MD that, yes, of course, you must have all the skills that are obvious with sight reading and, and understanding different styles and all the rest of it. But to be able to communicate, to try and relate. I mean, many, many times I've stood and I've, I've stood and listened to, for instance, a director talking to a composer and thinking or a, even some musical supervisors and thinking they they completely understand each other and they totally don't. And you've got to find a way to try and um, do the communication and, and make everybody understand what they need to do at what point and um, keep everyone happy. <laughs> so I think, so, yeah, I think I did gain a lot from doing all the different jobs I did do, the different roles I played, I guess, within GMTG. And it's about confidence, isn't it? It's just going, yes, I think I know what I'm doing. So I'm going to go with what I think, but obviously always being open to listening to other people and, and negotiating that. So in terms of all the skills that you need as a musical director, you know, you mentioned that you need uh, to be good at communication and, and working with different departments and also being a, a you know, a good musician. How would you weight those skills in terms of importance? Um, and are there any other skills that you think that are, are crucial to being a good MD? Look, I, I'm not quite sure how you could weight it because I think, I, I think the important thing is that, that, that if you're going to, if you think you're going to become an MD and you do have the, the obvious skills like the sight reading and the ob obvious piano skills and <clears throat> some uh, understanding of the repertoire, um, I think I think that, you know there's a lot of people. Obviously, it's very com com uh, competitive. Uh, who would all have those skills? I think you really just being down to earth and being able to understand uh, and be able to communicate. So having some understanding of also of text, I suppose, of some understanding of, um, you know, a musical is driven through story and understanding that that usually will have priority over uh, actual notes. And I think it's very easy for musicians um, to get uh, to get very, you know, um, caught up on on making being precise about the notes and also it depends on what you're working on obviously with sundime it's got to be it's really precise in the way it's taught in the first place i'm not suggesting that you wouldn't be precise i'm just saying that it is really crucial that you understand whether a director and maybe choreographer might be coming from and understand the text uh, side of it and the story side of it and that that often is crucial to allow that to to really um to manifest so it's it's yeah I, so I, I just think the, the understanding of how other people in the departments work and being able to work with everybody else is so key and it's you know you sort of say that's 99 percent of the job but it, you know that that but that means that's starting from a place where everybody is you know a good pianist and all the other things i, I listed as as being an mg in the first place yeah so moving to a, a more of a role of a pit musician then how do you see that role um you know within the industry and how do you think that might have changed over time do you mean as an md or as a pit musician as a pit as a pit musician so the, the um, players working 
Well, I think it's very competitive, probably more than ever. I think now that people realise, you know, this, the sad thing is there's less and less jobs in music. More and more people can create music from their bedrooms. So there's less and less opportunity, um, even since, you know, I started 20 years ago plus uh, from, from now. And, and band sizes in the pits in the West End are smaller than they used to be. Um, but that's also because the music has changed and, uh, you know, the la a large amount of music is now a more, um, more pop based. So you're often looking at a smaller band size anyway. Um, whereas when it used to be Rodgers and Hammerstein and Lloyd Webber stuff, early Lloyd Webber stuff, it was, you know, they, it was bigger orchestras and, and, but really there isn't, the, that just costs too much money now. And, and often there isn't the space and either in the pits or um, uh, on the stage. Um, so, so yes, yeah, so it's competitive. Um, and I think that's the hard thing. I think if you're if, further to what I was just saying, if you're a string player, there's less and less work. Um, if you're, you play any more unusual instruments it, it's fine if you, i think if you're a drummer bass player keyboard player um guitarist you're always gonna find work if you're very good um but uh, yeah there's just less of it so um I, and i think probably yeah you'll find just the, the nature as i've also said the nature of the the style of music has changed so that we're now it's far less sort of more um uh sort of kosher old school musical theater it's 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 much more uh, um pop feel it's and often you're playing from chords uh you know rather than just playing from um from proper scored music because more and more music is is coming from the pop world yeah and obviously you know as you mentioned that the size of the band has changed and even in the time since i've been watching theater you know i kind of noticed that bands tend to be more hidden away there's less bands on stage and often you know yeah. in certain shows even the md is completely remote as well so uh yeah. you know i think it must be yeah i mean i i, I get very frustrated with that I, I, you know every time i do a new show i make a real big point about wanting the band whether i'm supervising or actually the md a really big point about audiences want to see musicians they want to see they want to know there's a live band there there's something very odd about i mean if you've, I think you've ever seen a show which doesn't have a live band which has a track it, it's something really soulless about it and um it, you know it seeing my live musicians and i mean an in interaction of live musicians on stage uh, uh i think i mentioned to you before about come from away which i was really excited when i saw because there's a various sections in the show where the, the musicians are on stage with the actors and the you know the sort of repartee between between actors and, and musicians is fantastic it's really exciting and, and to just sit, you know people love sitting and watching musicians play um so I think that's really exciting. So I, you know, I always make a point um, of, you know, at least thinking if, if the band has got to be in a pit and the pit's got to be covered, at least let's see that the MD is there at the front. So we know there's a band there and perhaps, you know, at the end of the show, people can come down and look and see where, where everyone's doing. Um, there's something quite hard for musicians psychologically, I think about being in a pit under the stage. Uh, and I always think it's hard, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a hard part of the job, but, you know, you're doing eight shows a week for, for a long time and you're, you're stuck under there uh, in the dark kind of thing um, when all the performers are getting all the, you know, excitement up on top. So, you know, any opportunities and, and sometimes, you know, people are really um, creative and thinking, oh, well, let's at least get the band out at the end for a bow, you know, get them on stage for the bow. People are doing that more and more now. Um, you know, the, the, or finding moments where you could get the band on stage to, to, to deliver. And I, you know, I think it's, it's really, and I tell you what, a big thing's changed is the sound designer has got a lot more power than they used to have. And that's often a reason why you end up with a band um, backstage or in remote, because for a sound designer, it's very much, much easier to contain the sound. Um, if they've got everybody in a separate box room and not coming from a pit at the front. And of course, you know, the old theatres in the West End, most of them were built way before amplification 
came in. So, you know, it was, it, they were there for the singers to sing over and that you would hear, you know, the, the bands acoustically playing. It's very different now. Everything, everything is, uh, is amplified um, and has, you know, and now we're getting more and more actual really clever sound designers who can make it still sound live. I hate the thought that, you know, they can end up sometimes making you just sound like you're a studio recording. What's the point of that? Um, and also it's horrible for the band if they're split up. You know, often a drummer is put over in another room because he's not, he's, he's not enough space to have him in the pit or horrible for the drummer to then literally be like he's just playing, you know, he's just sitting in his own room playing, you know. So there's enough of that going on at the moment as it is. So, um, yeah, I, it, it has changed dramatically. But, I, yeah, I do think um, the sound is... I know, so have changed things. But, you know, if you have, if you have muso-friendly sound designers, they will work with you um, to, to get the, the sort of the best result. Yeah, so it's more of a, a collaborative effort in a way of, of kind of yeah, yeah, yeah. bringing the same thing together from different points of view and different perspectives. Cool. Um, so then have you got any advice, you know, for, for young budding pit musicians and or young budding musical directors who are at university and, you know, oh, I'm really interested in this career and going into musical theatre professionally. What advice would you give them? I think you, um, I mean, yes, it's good to have a reality check and know what that might mean. Um, I mean, I think it's slightly different MDs and, and um, pit musicians. I think... Um, I think as an MD, there's lots of opportunities to, I mean, there's actually more and more post-grad courses. Um, I mean, I'm connected to the the uh, Central um, School of Speech and Drama, have a, an associate MD role, which I sit on a panel for, which I actually did this week, um, each year where they actually paid to to help. And it's also sort of a training as well. But there's the courses at Royal Academy and the um, at Mountview and various, various other places, which they never were in my day. Um, but uh, um, what's I've forgotten the question now. What we said that what the how they get into yeah. What advice would you give to, yeah, to yeah. people who want so to pursue think, a career? I, I, musician, musical directors uh, need to get out there and I guess just um, get involved in as many um, like fringe productions. Uh, try and do bits of teaching. There's always opportunity playing for auditions. Um, you know, you can earn a huge amount of money, actually. You can sit, you can play for auditions every day of the week if, if that's what you want to do. But you just have to get in there. I think as a, as a pit musician, uh, the main thing is to know that, you know, it's going to be a hard old slog getting in there, but it's about getting your name known. So obviously making yourself always available for any teaching sessions and all that sort of stuff. And then <clears throat> starting the world of depping. And you go in, you know, and it's, it's you know, it's, it's tough. You have to be confident. <clears throat> confident in your own abilities but if you've done your homework and you've learned the show from the pads and the recordings that you get given um you can build up a really good career i've got friends who who work purely as depths they don't want to have their own chair in the in the west end because they love the variety of each night doing a different show in town um so i think you know for for, for for both parts of it, for pit musician and OMD, it's just about doing it. It's about getting out there. And obviously the, the brilliant thing at university is you have this access to all these people with all these skills and the opportunity and the space to do it all. It never happens again. Not in that way, because people always want money. There's always, I mean, there's, all, you know, there's something wonderful about the fringe and I, I'm a big fan of people learning by doing it and, and there's pub theatres and you know that that's great but obviously you then get into a world of what you should be paid and can producers afford to pay you anything and, and all that but at university it is a wonderful thing to all be so skilled and yeah many people won't go into it as a job but it's a great learning ground and also to try out all the different roles much as much as I did and, and go oh, what am I good at and what do I really enjoy and obviously you just have to be massively passionate for it and it's got to be what you really want to do and um and uh and and being keen and up for it and is you know is, is great take opportunities so using something like gmtg is a bit more of a practice run um and try to you know hone your skills because obviously you know we spoke before about how depping and, and um subbing and, and going in for play when they're away is is a very pressurized experience so mm -hmm 
you know, how important is it for you to have had experience working with a conductor and working in a band? And, and even if it is, you know, GMTG or uni or semi-pro productions, um, you know, that informing your learning and informing the way that you do things moving you forward. You only learn by doing it. You, you know, you, you, you don't learn by, you can do as much sort of reading about it or being sort of academic about it as you want, but it's only by doing it, both as a player or as an MD, um, that you, you can, you know, you understand, you've got to deal, like as an MD, you have to deal with situations that are presented to you every day. You know, you have to be good at multitasking as an MD you know, you've got to these days, there's very few stick conducts, there's very few shows that you just purely conduct for. Most shows you're playing and conducting. Um, you've got to be able to do that. You've got to be able to do that thing of hoping the whole band is happy and look, make, looking after them all, uh, conducting them all, as well as playing your own part. You've got to be happy with the fact that you're still dealing with the singers and all their issues um, all the time. Um, and 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 anything else and your your people managing all the time so it's it's very multi-skilled as a pit musician it's very different you purely got your work to do you you do your homework you you learn the shows and um and then you just get in there and you do it um but yes they're very very different different roles um but yes do it all the experience you gain from gmtg and you know just playing and enjoying yourself loving it is what it's all about yeah so obviously you know we're in a, a pretty unprecedented time for theatre in general at the moment um and you know with with shows closing and, and the west end stopping you know what what do you think that the future of the industry looks like do you think that at some point we're going to go back to where we were or who knows I, it's very difficult time isn't it i mean i'm married to a choreographer as well so we have uh, you know we've lost essentially all our income everything's just stopped we've got two boys at school um it's a very strange time I, i'm currently i've gone back to doing a lot of piano teaching and singing teaching at home which i haven't done for 20 years um but you know we will have to throw ourselves into everything my wife luckily has got a tv job which has come up for november so things are hard and things look very bleak at the moment but i you know the the industry up to march was it was healthier than it's ever been um you know there's more exciting work going on you know in this country than that you know there ever has i think it's a really exciting thing to be industry to be part of and I, I just hope, I th I'm sure, I think once, you know, the time goes by, you know, obviously we all hope that this vaccine will work or various vaccines will work and um, we get the confidence for people to go back to theatre and for performers to also feel safe and people in the working in the theatres to feel safe. You know, I don't think it'll be a sudden thing. I think it'll be a gradual thing and it'll be gradually producers having the confidence and, you know, if the government decide they want to support us at some point that would be great um to just ease us back in and you know it's a it's a multi-million pound business um you know there's a lot of, <laughs> there's a lot of money involved as well you know and uh, at the moment there's many many people really suffering so it's it's hard it's very hard but um but I, you know, people, you know, theatre has existed for thousands of years. It's uh, not, nothing, you know, um, as music has. So it's um, this is a pause, and uh, and everything will get back. And of course, I hope people will have been creative. Hopefully, over this period, um, there'll be new ideas and new things, and maybe some of the old ideas will go out the window. And maybe there's a, it's a time to refresh the page, and um, you know, new new ideas, some new people coming up with stuff. You know, I think people are being really inventive. I think there's a lot of young people being really inventive with stuff online and stuff that has been going on. Um, and uh, so you've got to be hopeful. You know, we've got to be we've got to be excited about the future. And for you, you know, you guys, when you when you will be coming out either next year or the year after, um, to it, it will bounce back. It will. It will definitely. I'm sure. Let's hope sooner rather than later. Yeah. <laughs> awesome right that's all we've got time for thank you so much for agreeing to talk to me um it's been it's been great and i hope that and i'm sure that it was extremely informative to a lot of people uh so thank you very much and i hope that you and your family and everyone um watching this uh stays safe and well uh you know up until the point where we can all go back to theaters brilliant all right thank, thank you so much take care see you Bye bye, bye.